break. Now I know what it takes. I'm putting a new face on the old one. Ready for anything. Playing with fate. Not a moment too late. Showing the whole world nothing can get me down. Ooh, ooh. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah. Give me a break. Cause I show me why. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah. I finally know where I belong. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah. Give me a break. Cause I show me why. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah. I finally know where I belong. gas canisters, 10 bucks a canister, three riot helmets, $60 a helmet. We got to cut some of this stuff out of the budget before the city auditor gets here. Hey, look at this, Chief. Bulletproof vest, $300 a piece. Do we need those? <laughs> you don't, I do. <laughs> Seven letters, famous sex researchers, Blank and Johnson. Charlie Johnson. <laughs> Good old Charlie Johnson. I don't think he was the famous sex researcher. Well, maybe not for you, but he certainly was for me, honey. <laughs> no, it's Masters and Johnson. They wrote a book on sex. I hope Charlie Johnson doesn't write a book. <laughs> Chief, where's your father? He's upstairs. Well, I got his vitamin A and his Jane Fonda workout book. <laughs> Look at this mess. No, I can't find the iron. I looked everywhere. Did you check the closet next to the ironing board? Oh. oh. You going out again tonight? Yeah, I have a date. Who with? The same person I've been seeing for a while. Chief, what's this? $1,500 for clothes for the man on the undercover vice squad? Well, women's dresses are expensive. <laughs> no more dresses for the men. Oh, that's gonna break Officer Murphy's heart. <laughs> I saw him on Grant Street the other night, and he looks lovely in silk brocade. Oh, yeah. And when he, you know, when he wears his hair in an upsweep. <laughs> No, the legs keep buckling under the ironing board. I know just how those legs feel. I'll be there in a moment. Oh, well, am I meeting this kid tonight or not? Yes, Dad. He's picking me up here, and then you'll meet him. No, oh, no. Yes. Would you mind getting a small coffee while you're in there? Okay. Uh, Nell? Yes? With cream, okay? Okay. <laughs> Nell? Yes. Uh, could I have a refill on milk, please? Of course, precious. <laughs> Nell, get off my back. <laughs> Katie, I don't know what the problem is. Putting up an ironing board has to be the simplest thing in the world. I'm just nervous about Michael meeting Dad. Oh, your new college guy, huh? Yeah. Look, now, Michael really means a lot to me. Well, you're the only one who knows how to handle Dad. <laughs> it's so good when you're young and in love, ain't it? It ain't bad when you're old and in love, either. <laughs> A small boat. Hey, coffee, everyone. Excuse oh, me. You. Cream, no sugar in mine. No coffee in yours either. <laughs> Why? My girlfriend Melissa drinks coffee. Your girlfriend Melissa is pregnant. Now you stay away from coffee. <laughs> He'll be here at eight o'clock. I'll wear something else. Katie, this guy you're dating, does he got a name? Michael Desmond. How come you never let me meet this Michael Desmond before? 
Didn't you think I'd like him? Oh, no, no, Dad, you'll love him, really. You see, I met him when I went to pick up my application forms at the college, and he's got blue eyes and a great smile. Did I hear the word college? Right before the blue eyes. <laughs> now, look, Dad. Don't look, Daddy, me. He's too old for you. Call him up and cancel a date. No, I told you. Just a minute, Katie. Chief. Kitty's a senior in high school no, look, and no. over 18 to boot. Now, why shouldn't she date a college boy? Because her sister Julie is dating a high school boy. Dad, <laughs> Julie's boyfriend is 16 years old. He's a scrawny, beak-nosed, nearsighted know-it-all who whines when he talks. <laughs> you are twisted. He happens to be a 16-year-old brilliant artist. He's a poet. He made the National Honor Society, and he'll probably graduate before you do. But he's still ugly, Julie. <laughs> oh, Chief, come on, admit it. College men are more interesting. College men are only interested in two things, beer and sex. For your information, Michael doesn't drink beer. <laughs> I don't want you dating any college kids, and that's final. I didn't date a college kid. <laughs> we were just walking in the park. We were totally innocent. I'll probably never see her again. What are you talking about, Pop? I'm talking about my privacy. Are you having me followed again? Of course not. Well, see that you don't. I was just walking around for my health, trying to be friendly. Something you should try. <laughs> You put a tail on your own father? Shit. <laughs> what is it, Simpson? I just looked at the figures for Rex's funeral. Who was Rex? Rex and Simpson were partners for a while. Oh, the police dog that died. <laughs> that ought to come out of your pocket. That dog would be alive today if you hadn't taken him to the pistol range. Grandpa, you have to go for your walk before it gets too late. Not till I finish my water. Doctor says if you drink eight glasses a day, you don't turn to dust so fast. I'll get that. Hello? Yes, it is. Just a minute. Chief is the station. Katie is five of eight. Shake a tail feather, honey. He doesn't have to shake anything. She's not going anywhere. Kaniski speaking. Why not? The chief thinks the college boys are too old for Katie. Hogwash. No such thing as too old. <laughs> too dead, yes, but not too old. <laughs> All right, I'll be right there. I got to go down to the station. Some rookie from the highway patrol just picked up Murphy. He was wearing his mini skirt, but he forgot his badge. <laughs> Simpson, take care of the auditor till I get back. Excuse me, what about Katie? I told you, Nell, I don't want her going out with that Michael. She plays so embarrass her. He's on his way over here. Just let her go this once. All right, I'll leave it up to you. But it's your responsibility, and I want a full report when I get back. Why don't you have Nell fingerprint Michael when he comes in? Would you know? I was planning to. Squid. Hey, wait a minute. Don't you girls be so hard on your father. I'm talking to you, Katie. It's just that sometimes your father's bark is worse than his bite. Rex had such a nice bark. <laughs> Now, you know I would never deliberately say anything would bring up sad memories. I know that now. Well, why don't you come to the kitchen and have a piece of German chocolate cake? <laughs> <laughs> Rex was a German shepherd. <laughs> oh, that must be the city order that... Oh. <laughs> boyfriend, Michael. Michael, this is Officer Simpson. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I gotta leave. I don't want to be here when the chief finds out his daughter is dating the auditor. <laughs> Here, Simpson, why don't you 
thought you'd try it. Where did Simpson go? Uh, he left. I want you two to meet. This is Michael. You gotta be now. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> How old are you? 35. Julie, Katie's boyfriend is 35. I love this. <laughs> Sweet face. Uh, I forgot my purse. I'll be right back. Honey, you forgot a lot of things, didn't you? <laughs> Michael, why are you robbing the cradle? <laughs> Look, I, I didn't mean for this to happen. I'm an associate professor at Glen Lawn Junior College. I just happened to handle Katie's enrollment application at school, and we kind of got involved. Michael, why are you robbing the cradle? <laughs> After all, Nell, Katie is 18. I mean, she's mature and sure of herself emotionally. Anyway, most women date older men. Michael, why are you robbing the cradle? <laughs> Frankly, I think I'm in love with her. You think you're in love with her? <laughs> well, Michael, I know I love her. And I don't want to see her get hurt. Are you ready to go, hon? Yeah. Well, now, now you know why I couldn't tell Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael, would you please wait outside just a few minutes? I want to talk to Katie. Girl talk. <laughs> of course. Yes. I'll wait out in the car. Oh, wee. <laughs> Whoa, there's quite a hawk there, yes. <laughs> I can see why you have the hearts for him. <laughs> now get in there, cool off. <laughs> I don't know what came over me. I mean, locking someone in the closet simply because they disagree with you is not the answer. It wasn't an intelligent thing to do. Get in the closet. <laughs> Because you let Katie go out with Michael, don't blame me. I'm sorry. It wasn't intelligent. It was Dom. I mean, your sister's over 18, and I have no right to try to tell her how to lead her life. Julie, why did you let me let her out of the closet? <laughs> why, you big dummy? Get it back! <laughs> Matt, the baby is just you and me. Don't forget about Julie in the closet. Julie, come out of the closet. I don't want to come out. It's okay now. I think she's under control. I'm sorry, honey. It's just the idea of facing your father has made me crazy. Oh. What am I going to say to that man? Well, don't look at me. I'm just a kid who's not old enough to drink coffee. Get me a pot of coffee so she can give us some ideas. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Yeah. One word and I'll kill you. <laughs> Chief, did you get off of some Murphy back? Not yet. Oh, what happened? Murphy got two dozen roses from the arresting officer. <laughs> He's considering a transfer. <laughs> Simpson, go home. She... Simpson's already gone. Oh, good. You see, audit is not coming tonight. I just got word on the car radio. Speaking of car radios, you should have seen Katie's boyfriend. <laughs> well, what's Katie's guy like now? Nice kid. <laughs> all right, come on. What's this all about, huh? Oh, what a beautiful, romantic night. Oh, to be 35 again. Chief. You see, Katie's new love isn't exactly a college kid. What exactly is he? Well, he's more like a college professor. In fact, he's close to 35 years old. <laughs> How close? He'll be 36 next year. You let my daughter go out with her. 
with a 35-year-old man? Good for them. You don't understand that! Anybody, anybody who go out with a girl half his age is a sick, demented creep. What's wrong with sick, demented creep? It works for me. I love this. Don't you just love this? Go to your room, both of you. You're grounded. For what? For having a sister who dates a 35-year-old man. Oh, Daddy, don't be absurd. What kind of reason is that? You want a better one? Not really. Don't try one. Chi, I know you're upset, and I was too. But I have found the best way to deal with this problem is to be in complete control of yourself. Tell him about the closet! Shut up, Precious! <laughs> Carl, you're behaving like a nincompoop. Young girls love older men. Why, why, just this morning, this cute little dolly helped me with my shopping cart. Had a bad wheel, see, and kept veering to the left, knocked over the whole oatmeal display. Sh sh shopping? You're talking about shopping carts at a time like this? OK, we'll talk about it at breakfast. <laughs> Nincompoop. Chi, if you come down too hard on Katie, you're going to lose her. Now, just Look, hear me out. What she's doing is wrong. Hey, I'm with you on that. But if you aren't careful, you're going to drive her right into the arms of this 35-year-old man. Oh, come on. Listen, my father wouldn't let me be a pop singer. So I ran away at the age of 18, right into the arms of a piano player. Good old Charlie Johnson. <laughs> What am I to do? Trust her. Just trust her. Have faith that everything you have taught her through the years will help her make the right decision. Yeah, I know, I know. No, I don't know. I don't even know what to say to this guy. Talk about your pension plans. You'll both be retiring soon. <laughs> you no, know, you know my temper. I'm liable to kill him. All right, Chief, calm down. Call, sit down, sit down, sit down. Listen. When my father used to get angry, he would grit his teeth, and he would start looking all mean and ugly, and just when he was about to explode, he would take a deep breath, and then he would start to sing the battle hymn of the Republic. It sing? Yes. I'd rather look mean and ugly. <laughs> Thanks for trying. I gotta calm down. Maybe some fresh air. <laughs> Look, Nell, Katie's home. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Dad? It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. I'm Michael Desmond. Excuse us, Katie. I think your father would like to have a little talk. Yeah, honey, let's go in the kitchen. You know, while you were in the closet, did you see my great coat in there? Come in. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. So, you're a professor. Uh, actually, associate professor, uh... Classical civilization. You know, uh, Aeschylus, Euripides, Socrates. No, most of my friends are cops. <laughs> Look, uh, Mr. Kaniski, I, I think I know what you're feeling. And if I had an 18-year-old daughter, I, I'd feel the same way. Well, I suppose that's something I should be thankful for. <laughs> you know, you are quite a guy. I thought you'd be a lot more upset than this. Well, the intelligent way to handle it is to be in complete control of yourself. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Then you won't mind. Uh, next weekend, I'm attending a seminar up in San Francisco, and I'm taking Katie with me. <laughs> My nice have seen. 
It's all right, Katie. It's all right, Katie. It's all right, Katie. It's Are you all right, sure? Katie. How many times do you have to tell you? Get out of here. Okay. Come on, sit down. There's some coffee it's, on the table. It's all right, Katie. I want you to drink it. Here. Mm, good night, Katie. Good night. You know, I think tonight went just great. Mm. And you are one lucky girl. My father never sang around the house. <laughs> Oh, now that is so sweet to understand. Oh, I love my father. Sure you do. <laughs> sit down, honey. What? I said sit down, sweetheart. I'm going upstairs. Oh, no, you are not. I said sit down. Oh. <laughs> Now, when your father disagrees with you, he's a squid. But when he gives in to you, you love him. <clears throat> well, Katie, I want you to know that I think you are the giant squid of all times. Come here, dear. I want you to say something. Come on. It doesn't mean a darn thing for you to tell me you love your father simply because he gives in to you. That's not love. That man is in there fighting against everything he believes in to accept what you want. Now, that's love, baby. And don't you forget it. Think about it. Sure. Good night, Katie. Good night, Daddy. Hey, Mama. <sighs> oh, by the way, when I go to San Francisco this weekend, I'm not staying with Michael. I'm going to stay at Cousin Shirley's. I knew you were smart, girl. But if you're really smart, you'll eat out. <laughs> Your Cousin Shirley cannot cook. <laughs> hey, you know what happened tonight? <laughs> what? Michael asked me to marry him. Really? He... He asked me to marry him. Well, I don't think I'm ready for that kind of commitment. I think I want to go to college. But then again, who knows? He is cute. Good night. Mine eyes have seen the <laughs> 